was there because they created together, they co-created that reality that was from a human perspective certainly a very tragic and sad and, and uh, awful time in your history. But Hitler was the catalyst for, for, for growth in many people who participated in that holocaust, and it really was a holocaust in human terms. And, and so good did come out of that. The fact that such a being existed in your reality is part and parcel a reflection of what your reality allows, and thus it is a service to you to show you this is what you support. Is this what you want to continue to support, or do you want to change this in the future? So it can be used as a service in that way. So yes, on a soul level, it can be looked at as a service, even though on the human level, it may only be seen as an atrocity. We do not teach or believe that you have to repay past debts, if you will. And that's what many people uh, see karma being like you have. You, you pass misdeeds from this lifetime or another lifetime. You've got to make up for those. And that's, in our view, nonsense. If you want us to be more blunt about it, it's bullshit. Discussing what you would call the concept of sin has been done many times. And you will know that I will say this, and it is controversial to almost all that you have been taught. There is no such thing. Sin has been and is created by human beings wishing then to assign something to it, it is often then control. It is often then punishment. Or you will have some guru tell you what is appropriate and inappropriate to God. You are not in any way uh, shackled by the past. The past of this life, past of many lifetimes ago. And so, there's nothing to repay. And what you might say, to that is that there must be inappropriate behavior. When you see those who are in prison for certain acts that are atrocious, when you see those who take lives, you would say, surely that is inappropriate. And I will say to you, that is exactly what it is in the scheme of the balance that you have chosen to create as your culture. But spiritually, it follows a pattern where those who have done it have done it by free choice. And when they get to the other side of the veil, there is no judgment. Therefore, sin, by the very nature of its definition, does not exist as sin. There are no sins, that is to say, things that you do, which then you will be punished for. All your power is right now, so it doesn't matter what's happened in the past. All that matters is where you want to go from here, and you have all the power to go wherever you want from here. Right here and now, you have that power. When you don't remember that you are eternal and infinite, the physical personality ego, the construct that you create, that is the physical mind, does not know that death does not equal annihilation. When the physical mind thinks that death equals non-existence or annihilation, it then goes into survival mode, panic, fear, doubt. But when it understands that Physical reality is simply a temporary manifestation, a mask, if you will, a projection of a greater consciousness that you are, and you understand that you always exist, then the fear of death vanishes. Let us say each time you conquer a fear, let us say each time you discover something about timing, your spiritual jar fills up a little inside. This spiritual jar is your akash, it keeps track of the energies that you solve. And when you come back in the next time, all of that is ready. At the same level you left it, you never have to relearn it. And many of you ask, what, you know, what role do past lives play? And we will tell you, a very big one. All right? And they're not really past, they're concurrent. So as you are both working on things, both lifetimes are working on things, you are clearing things out energetically, all right, through both emotional bodies.
That's enough to make your head spin. We have shamans walking around. We have the past Buddhas walking around who will never be Buddhas and never be shamans, but it's there. And all their life experience is there. Free choice determines whether they will open the closet. And when they do, you will find them putting upon everything they have learned. This is how you can have someone who is completely untrained in spiritual things suddenly become a master. It seems to be out of the way things work, but believe me, they have paid their dues and they have studied and they have had lifetimes of learning, just like you have. Why are so many humans afraid of death? Well, that goes back to conditioning as well. Um, that you are disconnected from source energy. So if you're disconnected, uh, then you don't remember what's going on. All right, and that was part of the game. It was just the way the game was set up. But there are more and more of you who are awakening and remembering that you are immortal beings. Transition uh, or death is always a pleasant experience. It's always easy. a pleasant experience. It's, we're talking about at the moment you made your transition. When you come to the planet, there is a predisposition. You might say a groove that you would travel in that has upon it a potential of your time of death. It is the human being who understands, however, that they can pop out of that groove and go in another direction with their own free will, which means that they will never meet their death in the groove. Therefore, we are saying this, that although the death is a potential around you all the time, and at some level that potential is known, you are still in control on this planet of your life in a grand, grand fashion. There is no predetermined time that you are going to die. You will choose it at the moment by free choice in real time in 3D. The idea for most individuals when they pass on into spirit is that it's like for a physical person waking up from a dream. Just as you wake up from a dream during the night and say, oh, well, that's just fading away, that wasn't real. So too, a soul may find itself, a spirit may find itself suddenly in spirit going, oh, this is who I really am, that was just a dream. Dying is the easiest thing you'll ever do because you are re-emerging back into the world of spirit, back to where you came from, back to your source. And it's always, uh, it's, it's like a breath of fresh air. Uh, it's uh, like taking off a tight shoe. You feel that kind of sense of relief and release. And if you could get a small glimpse or remembrance of it, you would never fear death again and you would go through the rest of your lives with a smile on your lips and with joy in your heart. There are energies of angels that you would call specialists. We're not compartmentalized to that degree for all one, but we take our tasks and we do certain kinds of things for one another. And in that you might say some then come into the planet and some then are support. There are far more supporters than there are humans who come in. I am a supporter. All humans have guides and helpers. Yes, you are all connected to much larger families than you may be aware of. Many of the guides are simply friends that you've experienced other lives with who simply may not be incarnating in the same time frame that you are, have remained in spirit for that duration to help you from the other side, so to speak. You are never alone. There's always help out there, no matter how far down you think you've fallen. The idea is that often a guide will attempt to remain unobtrusive also in giving you the information because the whole point of guiding you is to actually teach you to be your own best guide. So the idea is that many times a guide will use the props that exist in your own physical reality already to get you to pay attention to information that they feel you might need to know or that might serve you. So for example, synchronicity in life, those little coincidences that aren't accidental of just winding up at the right place at the right time overhearing exactly the conversation you needed to hear exactly at the right moment to be able to get that next piece of information you needed at exactly that moment may have been the work of your guide steering you in a certain direction and not delivering the information directly but knowing the information was available to you in your reality already if they would only nudge you down a certain street at a certain time that's all they may need to